Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we're making a very simple change to the doors on the buffet unit in our Jayco Swan that will change the way you think about the storage options and how you use this very handy little cupboard in your camper trailer. Come along and I'll show you what it is and how it's done. So all of you Jayco Swan owners out there would be very familiar with the center divider in the buffet unit as you first walk in the door. It makes it very difficult to store wide objects in here. In our case, we use this to store all our plates and bowls and bits and pieces like that. And when you go to get a plate, you literally have to jam it out or in past this divider. So in this episode, we're gonna do the common modification, which is removing this center divider to make this opening much wider and much more practical for your everyday camping use. Now, as with everything, there's a few different ways you can approach this modification. The first is you remove the central support completely and take it out of the van. The one thing that you need to overcome there is that when these doors close, you'll have a gap through the middle. So the next step of this version of the modification is that you flip the hinges to move the doors inwards to close this gap up. Another option is you take this central support and you fix it to the leaf of one of these doors. So it essentially leaves the hinges as they operate from factory. But what you need to do then is put in some kind of lock bolt or mechanism so that one of the leaves stays closed and the doors don't just pop open. Similar to how a double leaf door works inside a house. So you need to open one door first before you can open the second door. So I think from my point of view, that'd be kind of frustrating when you're camping because you can't just easily access stuff out of the cupboard. You've, you've kind of got to think of the sequence that they open as you're trying to access and pull things out. Now, the third option that I've seen is that people will actually join these two doors together onto this central support. So you've got one big opening door leaf. Now, I think from a access point of view, given this is the main thoroughfare, that's a little bit impractical because you end up with a really large door that either opens out towards the opening of the camper trailer or inwards, in our case, towards a lounge. So if you're trying to access from either side of that, it's gonna be extremely frustrating and annoying. One thing to consider if you are thinking about reusing this central support on one of the doors is that they skew the screws in from the back side. So when we pull this out, I'll show you, it, it, it looks a little bit unsightly. So I do think that the better option is to remove this completely, modify the doors so they sit inwards. And to be honest, for most people, they wouldn't even notice the difference. Now taking out the center support completely means you've got no way of keeping these doors shut. So you need to look at some kind of latching mechanism in the top bottom or both sides to keep these doors shut. So the first step's going to be remove these doors and the center support, and then we'll go from there. So you just need a drill or an impact driver or a screwdriver. And I like to get a little container, or in this case, a tote, just to put all the screws and loose fittings in so you don't lose them as you're going. It's Vaughn from the future here. Just a little tip, leave this door on. It doesn't need to come off. Just take the other one off and flip the hinges around. You'll see why soon. When you're removing doors, always leave a screw in the top hinge and that's the last one to come out. Makes it a lot easier to pull it off and it doesn't go flopping around everywhere. And you simply release the door and it's off. Now, when you're trying to remove this center support, obviously the shelves are a little bit hard to gain access into the screws in from behind. So it looks like we're emptying these out. Good opportunity to rearrange things when you put it all back in and we'll get into pulling this center support out. There's two screws on an angle in the top and then the same thing, two screws on an angle in the bottom and then some staples in there, which you can sort of just release as you pull it back out. 
Once I get it out, I'll show you the back and you'll have a good idea of what we're looking at. A few moments later. I'm not gonna lie, that was not fun. I ended up using a little stumpy screwdriver and these are the screws that you're trying to get out. So to get this out, because there are some staples still in behind it, just want to give it a light tap with a rubber mallet. And that'll be out. And this is the back side of the center support. So this is the front, this is the back. And you can sort of see how the screws go in on the taper and then there's a few staples that hold it all in as well. Now just remember if you are planning on attaching this back onto your cupboard door and using it with the alternate method these will be visible which is one of the main reasons we opted to delete this that way when you open the doors up it still looks all nice and tidy which is the main aim of the game. Back in the shed the first thing you want to do is remove these hinges so we can disassemble the pins and flip one of the pieces around. I use a screwdriver as it's really easy to do. And to be honest, you don't want to go pulling this really soft timber and having the screw thread through so you can't fix it all back in. Now I take the hinge and put it on the vise so I can pull these pins out. Show you that right now. So I found the easiest way is to put these in the vise so that the vise is just grabbing the little round pin that forms part of the hinge. Like so. And then you can twist the hinge to release it of the pin. And that's a little pin that comes out. So you're just trying to grab onto this head so you can twist it out. So now we'll do the same with the other side. Just have to be very gentle. And then you twist them out. And now what you want to do is turn this inside leaf of the hinge around so that it sits out of alignment. You'll notice you've got the roll here, the roll here, and now you have the corresponding roll on the opposite side. And then it's a simple case of just tapping the pins back in and you've got your flipped hinge. So again, I just use the vise and I slide it back in so you're supporting both portions of the hinge. Then you get your pin and you just want to lightly tap it back in with a hammer so that it secures the hinge. And again, flip it over, put it back in and you want the vise gripping onto both sides of the hinge. And you simply tap the other pin in as well. And we've now successfully flipped our hinge. Now what you do is do this to the other three and put them back onto the cupboard doors and we'll go back out to the van. And now we put the doors back on. Thought I'd give you a change of scenery and put you down here. See how that works. Now, as you can see, the doors won't quite shut. So all you simply do is flip the hinges on one side, which is fantastic. So I'm going to flip the most visible side back and then we should be right. Be back in just a tick. And the doors put back to original and wow. How good is that? Uh, to be honest, it looks like it's supposed to be like that. So I'm, pr I'm pretty impressed. And I don't mind showing this sort of stuff because the, these are the things you don't learn in forum posts or Facebook posts or anything like that. 
Um, you just sort of look at the pictures and there's a brief description. So it's running through all these things and, and, and I like to show the problems that you might come across so that people are aware of them. So no need to remove this door at all. It stays on and I just don't understand why in a lot of the photos of examples you see of this, you see the hinge hanging out here because if anything you want to keep this door where it is and move the one where the hinges sort of sit near the door across. Working through our latch options, the first I had this quite small simple magnet latch. Now it's not bad but I do think you'd probably have to put in two per door. Then you have this large magnetic latch. Now it's got a three kilogram pull strength and is pretty beefy. It's essentially two of these small ones with one plate. So you have this simple little plate which goes on the back of the door. It's nice and neat and discreet. And you have this that will go in the top of the cabinet. So I think we'll go with this. It's nice and neat. It is quite large, but it's got the strength I think we need to hold these doors shut. So I think this is a winner. We're gonna do this and see how it all works. Now, when it comes to installing the latches, I like to mark the middle of the doors. That way we can measure out from both sides and get the latches in the right spot. Now, when it comes to mounting this portion of the latch on the door, we obviously don't want it right up the top. It's got to sit down level with the where the catch is going to sit on the frame. So what I'm going to do is also measure down how far the door protrudes above the frame and it's roughly about seven mil. So when we go to put this on, we'll measure down seven mil and in the same dimension as per the latch, which will probably be, I think about 10 mil, which will clear the little rubber stopper on the door. And that should get it all mounted in there pretty nice. So we'll get stuck into that now and see how it all turns out. And this folks is the second one done. Beautiful. To be honest, that's probably more than enough to pull out and you're using the original latches as the pull so you're not having to modify anything too much at all so for really what would be a half hour job wow look at the difference it makes absolutely fantastic the last little thing you want to do is pull all the staples out and then it's a simple case of putting everything back in. Just look how easy that is. Fantastic. And there we have it. A nice, practical, easy to use cupboard that doesn't have that center divider. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. As per all my videos, I'll put a full list in the description of all the components we use, along with some additional instructions to help you along the way. If you've got a cupboard similar to this, or you have a Jayco Swan with the buffet, it's definitely something that's worth looking at. This project would take a maximum of an hour, probably half an hour, if you've gone through and worked out what you need to do and have everything ready. And it is so simple. You leave this door on, you take this door off, swap the hinges around, pull the divider out, put in some catches, and you're done. It really is that easy. So definitely look into doing it. It just makes it such a more practical and easy to use cupboard right at the front door to your camper. You can pull things out, you can put things back in. You don't have to worry about the size of them. Now, as per all our videos, please like, comment below with any tips and tricks or suggestions you might be able to offer others looking to do this same project. And most of all, if you can, subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be up to date with all the little projects we've got coming down the line. And trust me, we've got a lot. Some to do with the camper trailer, some to do with trips and we've got a really big project happening around the house in a few months time so stay tuned thanks for watching get out there and most of all stay safe